In this video tutorial, we will learn to solve KEQ problems using ice charts. If you recall, KEQ is a value that describes the ratio between the product concentration and the reactant concentration once a chemical system has reached equilibrium. So for this generic equation, A plus B produces C plus D, I can create its equilibrium expression by placing the concentrations of C and D in the numerator and the concentrations of A and B in the denominator. And as a reminder, concentration is always measured in moles per liter. By balancing this equation, we arrive at these little coefficients seen in blue over here, and we can write them as exponents in the equilibrium expression. Punching these values into a calculator, we arrive at the KEQ value. Now, if going in this direction gives us KEQ, going in the opposite direction allows us to use KEQ to solve for the equilibrium concentrations. In our first example, we're taking one mole of hydrogen gas and reacting with one mole of iodine gas in a 0.5 liter rigid container at SATP. As a reminder, SATP stands for Standard Ambient Temperature and Pressure, which is defined as 25 degrees Celsius or 298.15 kelvins, and standard ambient pressure is 100 kilopascals. But don't worry about temperature and pressure right now, as it is not directly used in our equilibrium expression. That being said, KQ is temperature dependent and will change with the temperature. So different temperatures will result in a different KQ value. But by convention, our KQ values are always assumed to be under standard conditions unless otherwise uh, mentioned in the question itself. You may also notice that this reaction occurs inside a rigid container, which means that the volume will not change during this reaction. Now, what I like to do when I start these questions up is to write out the balanced chemical equation. Don't forget to balance it because you need those coefficients in order to uh, determine what the exponents are going to be. Once I've written the balanced equation, I like to write the information from the question directly underneath the pertinent compounds. This allows me to organize my information more effectively. If you look at the question, you'll notice that the starting values are given to you in moles. However, once you put into the equilibrium expression, it must be measured in moles per liter, molar concentration. So don't forget to take your mole value, 1, divided by your volume value, 0.5 liters, and that's where I got the starting point of 2 over here. So 1 mole divided by 0.5 liters equals to 2 moles per liter. The same goes for the iodine. Once again, 1 mole divided by 0.5 liters equals to 2 moles per liter. And these are our initial values. Since the question only states that one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of iodine gas is placed in the container, it makes no mention of the hydrogen iodide. Without mentioning the hydrogen iodide, we can assume that only these two substances were present at the initial, at the start of the reaction itself. So you can assume that zero HI is present at the beginning because the reaction has not started yet. It hasn't had a chance to shift to the right. Because there's no hydrogen iodide at the start of the reaction, we cannot go in the reverse direction. Only the forward direction is possible at the beginning, which is why the change in concentration is a negative, negative, and a plus. Moving forward, the hydrogen gas is being used up, so it's decreasing. The iodine gas is also being used up, so it's decreasing, while the hydrogen iodide is being produced, so it's increasing. But we don't know how much of the hydrogen or the iodine is getting used up, and we don't know how much of the hydrogen iodide is being produced. So we say let x represent the change in concentration. Now for every one hydrogen gas that's used up, one iodine gas must also be used up in order for them to combine together, which is why these two are in a one-to-one -one ratio. But for every one of these that are used up, two of these are produced. This is the reason why balancing your equation is very important. So because two of these are being produced for every one of these, that's why it's a 2x value over here. So once this reaction reaches equilibrium, once it is quote unquote ended, the new concentration of hydrogen gas is 2 minus x, the new concentration of iodine gas is 2 minus x, while the new concentration of hydrogen iodide is 0 plus 2x, which is just 2x. And this is how we fill in our ice chart as it tracks the progress of the reaction, uh, showing us the concentrations of each reactant and product initially, so at the start of the reaction, during the reaction, and finally at the end of the reaction once it's reached equilibrium. Now all we have to do is write out our equilibrium expression, so KEQ is product concentration over reacting concentration. Uh, the KEQ value was given to us as a 50, and that is from the original question itself. Don't forget to take the coefficient and use it as an exponent in our expression. 
plug in our final equilibrium values, and let's solve it. Now, you might be tempted to pull out the big guns and immediately try to solve it using the quadratic equation, but I do not recommend that. This method is tedious and requires multiple steps, and I've found that the more steps you take, the more mistakes you're likely to make. So if there's an easier or faster way to solve this equation, as I'm about to show you, you should take it and avoid the quadratic equation if at all possible. In this example, I see the 2 minus x is identical here. So I'm going to rewrite it as a 2 minus x squared. Because I see the 2x and the 2 minus x are both squared, I can square root the whole thing to get rid of these exponents. But because there's an equal sign, whatever I do on the right hand side, which is a square rooting the whole thing, I must do on the left hand side, which is where I'm going to square root the 50 as well. This allows me to get rid of the exponents, and now my equation is a lot easier to solve. So whenever you see identical terms, you may wish to use this method. Moving forward, I'm going to expand the equation, collect the like terms, and solve for x. Now remember, x is not the final answer. We are trying to find the equilibrium concentrations for each of these substances. And that would be a 2 minus x for hydrogen, 2 minus x for iodine, and a 2x for hydrogen iodide. Which gives me 0.44 moles per liter for hydrogen gas, 0.44 moles per liter for iodine gas, and 3.12 moles per liter for hydrogen iodide in the end at equilibrium. Well, let's take a look at our next example. The reaction shown below was found to have a KEQ value of 4. If a 1 liter container has a fluorine concentration of 0.045 moles per liter at equilibrium, what was the initial HF concentration in this container? Now this question is a little ambiguous in the sense that you kind of have to assume that HF was the only substance present at the beginning. However, on my test, I would make that a little more explicit. Since I'm trying to solve for the initial concentration of HF, I'm going to let X represent that. Meanwhile, the concentrations of hydrogen and fluorine will be zero and zero because the reaction hasn't started yet. If you read carefully, you'll notice that it says the fluorine concentration is 0.045 moles per liter at equilibrium. Unfortunately, students who don't read carefully will quite often assume the 0.045 moles per liter of fluorine belongs at the beginning. But because it says at equilibrium, the 0.045 actually belongs in the equilibrium row instead. Once again, there are no products initially, so the reaction must move forward, it cannot move in reverse. As such, the hydrogen flora is being used up, negative value, while the hydrogen and fluorine are being produced, they're being created, positive value. I'm going to let Y represent the change in concentration during the reaction, but don't forget to include the stoichiometric ratios. So for every two HFs that break apart, one hydrogen gas and one fluorine gas is produced. So it's a 2 to 1 to 1 ratio. Since 0 plus y equals to 0 0.045, then I know that y is also equal to 0 0.045, and I can replace all these y values with a 0 0.045. So at equilibrium, I should have x minus 2 times 0 0.045. 0 plus 0 0.045 is, well, 0 0.045, and same thing over here. I can then write out my equilibrium expression. Once again, products are in the numerator, reactants are in my denominator, and don't forget to convert your coefficient into an exponent. You can then take the final equilibrium values from the ice chart and plug them in. The KQ value is given in the question itself. I can plug that in there, and now I can solve. Once again, I see similar terms, 0.05 and 0.045 being used again, so I can use that last trick that I had from before to avoid the quadratic equation. This can be rewritten as 0.045 squared, and I can just square root the whole thing to remove these exponents, but don't forget to do the same thing on the other side. So 2 equals 0.045 divided by x minus 2 times 0.045. This is a lot easier to solve than the initial equation, and I get x equals to 0.113 molar. Since X represents the initial concentration of HF, uh, that is my answer. I started off with 0.113 moles per liter of hydrogen fluoride in this container. Unfortunately, there will be some questions where you cannot avoid the quadratic equation, and this is one such question. So what I would like you to do is take this information, fill out your ice chart, uh, write out the equilibrium expression, and try to solve it using the quadratic equation.
So press pause, try it out for yourself, and when you're ready, press play, and we'll take it up together. All right, here we go. So the reaction shown below was found to have KQ value of 25. If a one liter container has two moles of hydrogen gas and three moles of iodine gas, find the concentrations at equilibrium. Now you'll notice that the container is only one liter, so that makes it easy for us to convert to moles per liter, just two divided by one is two, three divided by one is three. But remember, it won't always be a nice volume like I have in this example. But the important thing is that you remember that you can't just leave it as mole values, it must be moles per liter, molar concentration. Once again, the question doesn't make any mention of hydrogen iodide, so we can assume that there was no hydrogen iodide initially, which means the reaction must move forward, so the hydrogen concentration and the iodine concentration is going to decrease, negative and negative, while the hydrogen iodide concentration is going to increase, positive. Since it's a 1 to 1 to 2 stoichiometric ratio, I'm going to have an x to an x to a 2x ratio, making my final equilibrium values 2 minus x, 3 minus x, and 2x. Once again, I'm going to write out my equilibrium expression, products over the reactants, but don't forget to put the coefficient as an exponent. I'm going to take my equilibrium values and plug in the equation. Uh, the initial question said the KQ value was 25, so I'm going to plug that in as well. I can then expand and collect my like terms into standard notation. So this would be my A value, which I can plug in over here. This would be my B value, negative 125, which I can plug it in here and here. And 150 would be my C value, which I'd plug in over here. Once you solve the quadratic, you will get two answers, but only one of the answers will make sense. In this case, the answers were 4.3 or 1.7, but 4.3 is not possible because I would end up with a negative equilibrium value because 2 minus 4.3 is a negative value, 3 minus 4.3 also a negative value. And it would not make sense to have a negative concentration at equilibrium. Thus, only 1.7 makes sense. Once again, x is not the final answer. Instead, we got to punch it in back into our expression over here. So 2 minus 1.7 is 0 0.3. That's the final concentration of hydrogen. 3 minus 1.7 is 1.3. That's the final concentration of iodine. And finally, 2 times the 1.7 is 3.4, which is the final concentration of hydrogen iodide. So, as we just saw, using the quadratic equation to solve equilibrium problems is tedious, so we want to avoid it where possible. And I'm going to show you one more method to avoid the quadratic equation, and this is called the assumption method. So, when kq is a very, very small value in comparison to the initial concentration, the value of the initial concentration, minus x on your ice chart, is pretty much equal to the initial concentration. So we can basically ignore the x value in this case. Uh, so what I mean is this. Let's say I'm a millionaire. right? If I'm a millionaire and then I lost a penny, am I technically a millionaire anymore? No, I'm a $999,999.99 cent heir. All right? But do I still have the purchasing power of a millionaire? Absolutely. I guarantee you, if I'm going to buy something worth a million dollars, someone's probably going to give me a one penny discount. Well, it's the same thing. So if x is a super, super, super small number, like say 0 0.000001, well, your answer would be 1.999999, all right? But if you rounded this off and factored in sig figs, it's basically 2 in the end. So 2 minus a super small number might as well be 2. There's no need to be super precise in this instance, as it would make our calculations more difficult without providing much of a benefit. So, once again, if x is a super small value in comparison to the initial concentration, you may assume that it's negligible and ignore it. But how would we know if x is a super small number in comparison to the original concentration? Here's how we do their check. You take the initial concentration, divide it by the KEQ value, and if that value is greater than or equal to 1000, that tells you that x is at least several orders of magnitude smaller than the initial concentration and is negligible in comparison to the original concentration. So in this case, in order to determine if x is negligible in comparison to 0.4, I'll take the initial concentration, divide by the KQ value, which is given to you in the question over here, and I see that, oh look, it is much greater than 1000. So I can tell that the x value over here is at least several orders of magnitude smaller than 0.4. So 0.4 minus 2x 
might as well just be 0 0.4. Let's just keep things simple. Now, you can't assume that x is negligible for every single column. You would have to do this check for each column that you wish to apply the assumption rule to. So there may be situations where one column you can use the assumption rule, but the next column you cannot use the assumption rule. Now be careful, the assumption rule only works for addition and subtraction, not multiplication or division. So for instance, let x equal to 0 0.000001, so a super small number. So if you have 2, large number, minus x, small number, well, that's going to be basically 2. Like 1.9999, once you factor in the sig figs, is essentially 2. Same thing when you're adding it. 2 plus a super small number might as well be 2. But if you try to multiply by x or divide by x, you do not get 2 as your answer. So going back to our example, 0 0.4 minus 2x, that is pretty much 0 0.4 because it's subtraction, I can use the assumption rule here. But 2x, you can't just say 2x, but you can't say 2x is basically 2. That would be incorrect. All right, so I'm going to write out my equilibrium expression at this point, products over reactants, products, reactants, and don't forget the exponents from the coefficients when you balance the equation. And since the question provides you with the kq value, I'm going to sub in all my ice chart values into the expression itself. And right off the bat, we see that this expression is a lot easier to solve than if I had left it as the original 0 0.4 minus 2x that was in the original ice chart before we simplified to a 0 0.4. Had we not simplified it, this would be an ugly equation to solve. All right, so I'm just going to expand this, collect like terms, and simplify. In the end, I find that x is equal to 8.62 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Now, when solving for this expression, some students may look for the cube root function on their calculator. And you can definitely do that. But rather than searching for that function on your calculator, which may or may not have it, you can just uh, put it to the exponent of 1 over 3 instead. The same goes for fourth root, fifth root, or sixth root. Just put it to the power of 1 quarter, 1 fifth, or 1 sixth, etc., etc. Now, once again, x is not necessarily our final answer. It is for NLCL concentration. But for the NO concentration, it's 2x, and the CL2 concentration is just the x over here. So plunk them in and find and solve for your final equilibrium concentration values.